Hi, Mike here. Before I go any further, I don't want to be accused of bait and switch, so I'll be upfront. You can't actually find the next largest value using VLOOKUP. What this video covers is a workaround. So now I've got that out of the way, let's begin. One of the problems with VLOOKUP is that when you use TRUE or ONE as the fourth argument, if Excel can't find an exact match, it returns a value that is the largest value that is less than the value being looked up. If that sounds like gobbledygook, I'll demonstrate with an example. B3 contains a VLOOKUP formula, which is used to calculate the bonus. The revenue for March is $190,000, but $190,000 does not exist in column D. Instead of displaying an error, because I used TRUE as the fourth argument, what Excel does is it says, if $190,000 did exist in column D, where would it go? The answer is it would slot in between $180,000 and $200,000. Excel then uses the smaller of those two values, in this case 180,000, as the lookup value, and that means the bonus is 10%. But what if you needed to return the next largest value? Here we have a spreadsheet that's used by the packing team at a company that sells wine. Somebody has created a VLOOKUP formula in C4 to return the box size. This is dependent on the number of bottles purchased. For example, if someone buys 24 bottles of wine, box size B is required. If someone buys 48 bottles of wine, box size D is required. But what if someone buys 30 bottles of wine? The V lookup returns B, and this is because 30 is between 24 and 36. And as I explained earlier, the lower of those two values is used as the lookup value. But actually, they'd need box size C, because box size B can only hold 24 bottles. They'd be left with six bottles and no box to put them in. So in this situation, we need Excel to return the box size associated with the next largest value, i.e. 36. This is something that VLOOKUP can't do. However, there is a workaround using two other functions, index and match, and that's what I'm going to show you. Now, I know what you're thinking, XLOOKUP can do this, but there are still many users who don't have XLOOKUP, and that's why I'm addressing the issue in this video. Index and match are two separate functions, but they're often used together. Let's look at index first. The index function looks within a range and returns a value from the xth row and yth column of that range, where x and y are either numbers or cells that contain numbers or formulas that generate numbers. In other words, if I put this formula into C4, Excel returns a value from a cell that is in the third row and second column of the range F3 to G7. The third row of that range is 5, the second column is G, so it returns the value from G5, which is C. In this spreadsheet, the column argument will always be 2, but the row argument will be different. It will depend on the value in C3, the quantity ordered. So this is where the match function comes in. Instead of the row argument in the index function being a fixed value, we use the match function to calculate it. So what does the match function do? It returns the position of an item within a range. In this case, the item is the value in C3 and the range is F3 to F7. So, for example, say C3 contains 36. The match function would return 3 because 36 is the third item in the range F3 to F7. But here it's not so simple because the value in C3 may not match any of the items in F3 to F7. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to edit the formula in C4 and I'm going to replace the 3 
which is the value of the row argument from the previous demo, with the match function. The first argument of the match function is what we're looking for. The second argument is where we're searching. The third argument tells Excel what sort of match to perform. It can't be an exact match for the reason I've already mentioned, so it can't be zero. Logic would say in this example, it should be minus one because that retrieves the position of the next largest value. And it's the next largest value we're trying to retrieve. However, to use minus one, the lookup array F3 to F7 must be sorted in descending order. And this list is in ascending order. So the only option I have is to use one. What one does is finds the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. It's the same as true in VLOOKUP. The lookup value is 30. 24 is the largest value that's less than 30. 24 is the second item in F3 to F7. So the match function returns the value 2. Because the match function is being used as the row number argument in the index function, what is actually returned into C4 is the contents of the cell that is the second row and second column of F3 to G7, which is B. So I need to make one small edit to the formula. I'll add one to the value returned by the match. So two becomes three. And now the index function returns the contents of the cell that is in the third row and second column of F3 to G7. If I change the value in C3, the value in C4 changes as well. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.